All right, guys, so we're just going to jump right in here and go over the cloud applicator actions. You've got some really, really amazing actions in this collection. The two most amazing actions, I would say, is the blown out sky uh, action as well as the overcast sky action. These actions will work on both blown out skies and overcast skies and re completely replacing that sky with the cloud overlay. There's no retouching uh, that needs to be done. Uh, for the most part, it's just one quick click and maybe an extra 30 seconds of cleanup. So let's go ahead and just jump right in here. We're going to start off with this image. I do want to mention real quick, um, comparing to the overcast skies and the blown out sky action, I usually use the blown out sky action. Uh, we're, we'll be working with these three images here. What else has a, there's a little bit of blues and grays in this image, and that's okay. I'll still be using the blown out sky action and this one as well. Now, if your sky is a little, it has a little bit more saturation, maybe you can see some clouds in the sky as well. You'll want something stronger. In that case, you can go with the, over, uh, the overcast sky. Okay, so I'm going to uh, press play. You've got your little pop-ups that guide you through the entire action. And at this point, you'll get a pop-up on your screen and you can just navigate to where you've already saved your cloud overlays. Okay, so I'm going to click on my overlay and select place. Okay, and it's literally like magic. Look at how the, the clouds just appeared on only my sky. It's not really interfering with the rest of my image here. So I'm just going to uh, make this a little bit larger. Now, you don't have to stick with the original image. Um, dimensions, you can just stretch it a little bit here, either lengthwise or heightwise, whatever looks best with your image. Okay, and natural. So I'm just going to press enter. You can click twice as well to apply the overlay. And at this point, I could leave it as is, or you could do just a little bit of touch up. Notice there's a little bit of a white line that goes around this, um, this little building here to the left. So I'm going to click on the layer mask that's already selected, not the image thumbnail, but the layer mask thumbnail where you can see your whites and your blacks. Now it's the black perfect sky uh, layer. It says black because we'll be painting with a black brush. So I'm going to bring black to my foreground color. I'm going to make sure my brush is selected. If you don't see it, right click and select your brush. Okay, make sure your opacity is at 100%. Okay, I'm just going to make my brush so smaller by clicking on the left bracket key and I'm just going to go um, you know, paint across the edges of this building here. Notice how I'm not being super careful. If I get some of it on uh, the building, that's fine. It's not going to apply the actual cloud overlay. Okay, and I'm just going to make my brush a little bit larger here and paint along these edges. I want to get along her hair just to make sure that there's no place where I have uh, where the sky has not applied. So I'm, I'm really liking the outcome of this edit with our uh, cloud overlay. I do want to mention real quick as well, if you do have any other white areas or light areas of your image that your cloud overlay has been applied to, it will show up on that area as well. If that happens, click on the white recover image details, um, the layer mask, not the, the image thumbnail. Now it says white, so we're gonna paint with a white brush. I've still got my brush selected. And I'm just gonna remove, it looks like some of the, the sky had been placed on this little uh, dirt road here. So I'm just gonna remove that, very, very simple. I literally, this took me an extra 30 seconds after placing the sky onto this image. So um, now afterwards, you do have some additional um, variations for your sky within this one action. Okay, and this is also going to apply to just the sky alone. So notice how the background is starting to blur out. Kind of want my sky to match up with that. So I'm going to blur the sky as well. Simply by clicking on this little box or eye next to the blur, your sky layer. I can click on that and adjust the opacity as well. Okay, I've got a sky, uh, a sky fade. This action, if you click on your little gradient tool and uh, start at the bottom of your image and just drag it upwards, you'll notice 
that your sky is starting to fade and you have a little bit uh, more of a natural skyline. If it doesn't work the first time, just drag upwards again. Just keep doing that until you find that you're liking the, the fade that you get. Okay, so I can add that fade and I can adjust the opacity as well so it's not so strong. I can add a little bit of a hazy effect to my sky uh, and again, bring the opacity down. Um, you can make that lighter and notice how all of these actions are applying to just the sky alone. Okay, warmer sky, I've got a cooler sky. I can add contrast and saturation. So there's quite a bit that I have within this one action. It's really, really amazing. And uh, we're so excited to have these uh, available for you guys. Okay, so let's move on to the second image. I'm still going to run out the blown out sky action. And I'm going to pick this really nice saturated uh, sky that we've got here. Okay. And don't be afraid to, um, you know, kind of turn your skies diagonal or, you know, whichever way you feel it's working best for your image. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. Drag it a little bit lengthwise. There we go. I'm really liking that. Okay. So now I'm going to let my action play. And I'm going to start off with my black perfect uh, sky layer mask. I'm going to bring black to the foreground color. Notice when I see the layer mask, it's kind of white and gray instead of white and black. That means the sky was a little bit, uh, it wasn't completely white, so it didn't apply to the full strength. Now I can leave it as is, or if I would like that extra saturation that the, the sky had originally had, I'm just going to paint back over it here. Okay, really, really super simple. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and just paint along the house. Okay, it really doesn't take too long. And I'm just going to go around the edges here. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to my recover image details and notice how some of the sky was applied here to um, the side of her shawl that she's got. So I'm just going to wipe that off of her clothing and I'm going to remove some of this. Uh, it looks like some of the sky had applied to the, the home as well on the, some of the side shingles. So I'm going to wipe that off as well or paint it off rather. Um, not a whole lot had been applied. So again, that's a really super, super fast and quick cleanup. Now I can start to get creative with my sky. The background of this image is blurred as well. So I, I really like to kind of take a look at the background of the image. And if it's blurred, then I'll, I'll blur the sky a little bit as well. Give it that nice soft bokeh. Um, again, you can play around with the hazy sky, the light in the sky. Um, I do want to show you an additional action here. So I'm going to run the Dreamy Color Booster. And you get your little instructions that pop up along the way. With the Color Booster, it's really important to keep in mind that it does boost specific colors that are already existing in your sky. Okay? So if I click on Boost Purple, there's not really any purple in the sky, so I'm not going to see much of a difference. Uh, if I click on Boost Yellows, Look at that nice, saturated, um, dreamy glow that I've got going on here. Uh, boost reds, it starts to get a little bit warmer, boost yellows and reds. Now, it, if it is a little bit strong, again, take the opacity. I like to bring it down to zero and just work my way up until I find that it's working best with that specific image. And then you can go back up and um, you know, lighten the sky a little bit more, make it a little bit warmer. Um, there, there's a bunch that you can do, again, with the actions just to really customize your sky and make it your own. Okay, so I'm going to move on to this uh, last image here. And I do want to show just really quick what the difference between the applicators, uh, the blown out and overcast applicators are, and just the regular cloud applicator. Um, so I'm going to go down and select my cloud. All right, and I'm just going to resize uh, the clouds real quick to fit this image. Notice how I didn't automatically mask over my subject, okay? 
and now my clouds have disappeared. That's normal. Uh, and my layer mask has already been selected. That's automatic through the action. These actions are very, very simple to use. Um, so I'm just going to paint with a white brush. Okay, I've already got all of that selected. And wherever I paint is where I reveal my sky. So it just takes a little bit longer because you, it's, you know, it's like exactly like being an artist. You're painting where you need uh, this specific effect to apply. So, you know, as I'm doing this, you have to be careful around the edges too. You can switch to black to kind of remove if you have painted too much around the edges. Um, but it is a little bit more tedious. So um, I'm just gonna click on this and throw it in the trash just to show you. Now you wanna use the cloud applicator. I know you're probably probably thinking, well, why would you use the cloud applicator if the overcast sky and the blown out sky actions are so easy to use? Um, it, you wanna use the cloud applicator when you have a very deep saturated or vivid sky already because the overcast sky and the blown out sky actions only work on uh, skies that are a lot lighter and blown out. Um, so that's, that's when you can use those. Otherwise you'll want to use just the regular cloud applicator which again also works very well and just takes a, a little bit more time than the other actions would take. Okay, so I'm gonna hit continue and I'm going to select our sky here and just resize it. Okay, I'm not taking a, a whole lot of time with the resizing and placement. You can find how that works best with each image. Uh, again, I'm just going to start on the the black perfect sky. I actually think that's pretty good here. We just want to touch up around her hair. See how she's got these little white lines around um, the edges of her hair here. Again, I'm not being super careful. I don't have to, with this action, I don't really have to worry about getting that hazy um, color of the sky painted onto my subject. So. I'm just going to paint around here. Now I did definitely get the sky on her already. So I just wanna wipe that off. Again, that's a real super quick fix. That's just gonna take me 30 seconds here. I'm getting the sky uh, I'm painting on her dress, removing the little bit of the sky overlay that had applied. Okay, and you might wanna zoom in and be a little bit more careful with removing um, a sky overlay and I am at this moment. I just want to breeze through this here more for uh, time purposes. Okay, so that's looking really good. Um, and now again, we can go in and make changes. I'm actually, whoops. And if you accidentally remove, like I just removed the sky overlay <laughs> right here. So I'm on my black perfect uh, sky layer mask. I didn't paint with black, I painted with white. So I'm just gonna switch back to black and paint it back on because I made that a uh, little boo-boo. I'm gonna large in my brush. It looks like the, the sky overlay hadn't applied completely on the edges here. It's just a little bit hazy. And if you like it um, with the little bit of, of haze, then that's absolutely fine. You can keep it that way. Um, so I'm just going to go down to the bottom. The sky fade looks lovely, I think, with this specific sky. Uh, it makes it look more realistic. And then I can go in and blur the sky just a little bit here. And, um, and then you can make your changes from there. Uh, again, this is a really, really well-rounded, comprehensive set. Literally, the sky is the limit with this collection. All right, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this uh, tutorial that we had put together for you guys. And, and I hope you enjoyed the collection just as much as we did making it.